Hello again all, and I decided that since I have been unforthcoming with WES videos lately, I needed to give out reparations. So once you watch this video, you are no longer allowed to complain about my output in the past, present or future, because that's how it works. Anyway, you lucky viewers are going to receive not one, not three, but two separate stories in one video. Thank you, thank you. Yes, you can leave your likes and upvotes now. Don't even bother to wait for the outro. So let's crack on with story number one. Bungling would-be burglar chased away about up to 80,000 angry bees after leaping over fences and landing on hives. A would-be burglar was chased away by up to 80,000 angry bees after leaping over a fence and crash landing on hives, their keeper said today. Award-winning beekeeper Dale Gibson told how the unfortunate thief scaled the fence around the compound in Pottersfield Park near Tower Bridge in an apparent bid to pinch tools and machinery. But the boxes, each housing 20,000 insects cared for by the Bermondsey Street bees, were knocked over, smashing one and knocking the roof off another, prompting what Mr. Gibson described as a defensive response. He said, although they can't see in the dark, bees can find enough reason to go three feet and drive off attackers. That's how they would have viewed this incursion by our would-be burglar. It meant that nothing was stolen, no locks were tried, and presumably the person who jumped down was pretty inclined to jump up again, but not without having an up-close moment with agitated bees who really meted out their own form of insect justice. Police are scouring the area for a human pin cushion. The public have been warned not to approach this person as it is possible that large scale pus explosions could really destroy a nice outfit. Mr Gibson, who has hosted Michelin starred chefs such as Raymond Blanc and Daniel Clifford at his Bermondsey Street Bees office, said that the alarm was raised by a member of the public who noticed that the hives were disturbed. It was reported when the would-be thief read this, they were heard screaming, They were disturbed! Hives don't just fall over. They get knocked over. Immediately my thoughts were, this was an extraordinary action due to external influences. He said the hives were able to be put back together and they didn't lose any honey stock, but they did have some casualties. I think the bees would have given as good as they got. The businessman who also manages beehives at Soho farmhouses, where supermodels Suki Waterhouse and George M. May Jagger have stayed, added that he felt exasperated by what had happened. The sheer opportunistic stupidity of jumping off an eight-foot roof and then jumping down to try and gain some form of economic advantage is beyond reckless, he said. Bees only sting if they feel under attack and the hive acts as a single unit, so an individual bee will sacrifice itself for the hive. Mr Gibson and his wife Sarah Wyndham Lewis launched Bermondsey Street Bees in 2007. He said neither he nor the Potterfields Trust a not-for-profit organisation that manages the park have reported the incident on February 25th. He said he believed natural justice has been served. Yeah, screw social justice. I actually respect the fact that he did not try to run for any victimhood and just let the situation lie. Just opening up the intruder for ridicule he or she deserves. For my second story, I'm going to warn people ahead of time that it involves a death. It also involves the UK's 2019 entry for the Darwin Awards. I realise that this may come across as mocking a dead person, but I feel it is important to my viewers to look at examples in life so that they can learn something from them. 
To be honest, I do not mean to sound cold or heartless or cruel, but I am, so that's how it comes out. Having laid out my caveats, Mum chokes to death on Jaffa cakes during party trick. I think people will understand why I put in the trigger warning. For those of you not in the loop, a Jaffa cake is a snack that calls itself a cake and somehow falls into the biscuit category. They are not very popular in Ireland because they are orange biscuits. A British mother of one, yes she had a child, choked to death while trying to see how many Jaffa cakes she could put in her mouth for a party trick. Bethan Gaskin, 24, blacked out and stopped breathing when the snacks got lodged in her throat as she desperately tried to spit them out. She collapsed at home in Bourne in Lincolnshire on February 22nd and was rushed to hospital. The 24-year-old died five days later at Petersburg City Hospital. I want to stress again, I am not trying to mock a person for dying, I am highlighting the idiotic way in which this person's demise was caused. Her devastated mum, Michelle, warned people of the risks of food challenges. She said, I remember raising my eyebrows when Bethan started the game, thinking, how old are you, and telling her to spit them out. Yes. You heard that correctly. Her mum watched her do this. She was like a little hamster with her cheeks bulging. She danced off to the toilet to get rid of them and it was only a while later we realised she'd been gone quite a long time. A friend went to check on Bethan and found her slumped on the bathroom floor. Yeah, when my child was choking and running around in a panic, I wanted to make sure she was okay. But I wanted to finish this nice cup of tea first. Then I sent her friend out to check on her. Firefighters arrived a few minutes later to give first aid before the ambulance crew arrived. Hang on, hang on. Why were the fire brigade called out? Let alone... Why did they get there before the ambulance crew? That's concerning. Michelle said, In my heart, I knew we had lost her before they put her into the ambulance. Too much time was passing. I can't even comment. Bethan, who worked as a carer and was hoping to break into the beauty industry, was in hospital for five days before doctors realised the extent of the brain damage. Call me judgmental, but given this story, I am not sure how successful or safe she would have been as a carer. The family gathered at her bedside to say their goodbyes on February 27th. Michelle said she looked perfect and so beautiful. It was just like she was sleeping. So many people have said they played a similar game with marshmallows. Even my 90-year-old aunt said she does it with Maltesers. Yeah, but that's kind of cheating, as Maltesers have all those honeycomb air pockets inside them. This just shows how fragile we are. It took the death of her daughter to make her realise how fragile we are. If only she had learned that sooner and taught it to her daughter, the whole situation could have been avoided. I'm not going to labour this any further, as I think my story makes the point for me. And that point, as you should know by now, is that you need to just remember your sole purpose in life is to serve as a warning to others. Thank mm -hmm. you.